All right. Let's solve this problem. So a person stands at the rim of a large turntable. Well, this is a turntable. This is a person. The radius of the turntable is four meters. It's heavy, massive. The mass is 200 kilograms. The person is much lighter, 60 kilograms. So the person makes two marks, one on the turntable, second on the floor, and uh, then he starts walking. So to, he walks slowly. 10 minutes later, he steps again on the same one mark he made on the turntable. Well, that's what's happening. So, turntable, person. If the person is walking and uh, we hold on the turntable so it's not moving, walking on the turntable is not different from walking on a floor. However, if the turntable is free to move, what's going to happen? Well, we have two objects interacting that's a closed system and for the closed system we know some conservation laws in this situation the turntable can rotate one way or another and that means we could apply the law of conservation of angular momentum so before anything started happening. We had a turntable, person, or if we look from the top, we don't see anything but just head. And uh, everything is at rest. So for the person, the angular velocity is zero. For the turntable, it is zero, which means the whole system doesn't have any angular momentum. The initial angular momentum of the whole system is zero. After. Well, The person starts walking and uh, well, let's say the person walks clockwise which makes his angular velocity negative well at least it's not zero anymore for the person angular velocity is not zero for the turntable, well, we don't know. What we know is, for the person, angular momentum is not zero anymore. For the turntable, the angular momentum should be equal to this. And the whole, total, net angular momentum for the system should be equal to the sum of these two. Is this the law of conservation of angular momentum? No. This is just the final angular momentum of the system. And this is the initial angular momentum of the system. What does the law say? The law says that for the isolated system, the initial angular momentum and final angular momentum should be equal to each other. But if the initial was zero, that means the final 
also should be zero, but the final is equal to the sum of angular momentum of the person and angular momentum of the turntable. And uh, this one is not zero, hence this one also cannot be equal to zero. In fact, if we solve this equation for the angular momentum of the turntable, that's what we get. Not zero, both. But more importantly, actually, since we know how to calculate the angular momentum for the person, for the turntable, the angular momentum of the person equals the rotational inertia of the person times the angular velocity of the person, the angular momentum of the turntable rotational inertia of the turntable times the angular velocity of the turntable. We also call it moment of inertia. So if this guy is negative, minus times minus makes it positive, this guy should be positive, which means the motion should be counterclockwise. So, when the person starts walking clockwise and we don't hold on the turntable, the turntable starts rotating counterclockwise. So this arrow represents the angular velocity of the person and this arrow represents the angular velocity of the turntable. So it might look something like this. The guy walks and the table turns the turntable, the guy. So we can make a mark on the ground and we can make a mark on the turntable. If we hold the turntable, the turntable doesn't move and the guy just walks around and when the guy is back to original location, he is also back across the red mark. However, because when the turntable rotates, it spins in opposite direction and the guy meets the same mark at a different location relative to what? Well, relative to the ground, relative to the earth, everything is happening relative to the ground. So there is another observer or you know, like office tree, so from the perspective of the room, from the perspective of the ground, the guy doesn't make the whole revolution. And uh, what we need to calculate is uh, this angle. The angle by which the turntable turns relative to the ground during the whole walk. And as we know, the whole walk took 10 minutes or 600 seconds. He was uh, walking very slowly. Well, <clears throat> so, this is the angle, well, let's call it theta, 
the turntable makes relative to the ground and uh, angle over time that's the angular velocity of the turntable relative to the ground okay the guy was here and uh, now the guy is here this is the angle the guy makes relative to the ground so for the turntable for the person for the person the angle relative to the ground divided by time represents angular velocity of the person relative to the ground. Now, <clears throat> remember we had an agreement for uh, counterclockwise angles. Uh, angles are positive, clockwise angles are negative, so negative angle gives negative angular velocity. But if we look at this picture, actually, if we take absolute value of this angle and we add the second angle, well, we get the total of 360 degrees, one revolution, two pi radians, This is due to the fact that we could uh, consider this motion as composed of two stages. The first stage, first stage, the guy walks, but we're holding on the table. And second stage, now the table turns back and brings the guy here. So, if we want to, for example, calculate this angle, what do we have to do? First, we're going to get 360. 360. And then we're going to subtract. And that should give us the absolute value of this angle. How does it help us? Well, it helps us. It helps us because we have an equation which relates to this velocity. And uh, if we multiply each velocity by time, we get angles. So if I copy this equation and multiply by time well this T represents table table time this will be the angle for the turntable. This will be the angle for the person. And uh, we can just rewrite, rewrite the person equals. The equation, and by the way, by the way, th this angle is negative for the person, right? So it is equal to negative one times its magnitude.
So if I multiply the whole thing by negative one, that gives me just magnitude of this angle. So negative one times this, this is the magnitude of this angle. Everything is positive now. And the second equation we know, if we add these two, that gives 360 degrees. We don't have to convert anything in the radians or revolutions. We can keep degrees on both sides. Well, <clears throat> because this is what we're looking for, this is what we want to get rid of. 360 minus angle of turntable. And this expression I can use now right here to eliminate one of the unknowns. So what will be my new equation? Well, the inertia for the person times 360 minus angle we are looking for is equal to the inertia for the table times that angle we are looking for. Now, a person looks like a dot. So the inertia for the person equals mass times radius squared, the radius of the circle it makes. 360 minus an unknown and the turntable is a disc for the disc the inertia is equal one half times mass times radius squared since I do it the way I want to do it for now I just uh, I just do it algebraically because it helps me to simplify things because the radius is the same for both yeah. center radius we can cross it out and we also can uh, now plug in numbers for masses 60 for the person Two hundred for the turntable. Well, two hundred over two is a hundred, and uh, three sixty minus this should be equal to one hundred over sixty times the same unknown. So 360 should be equal to, I take this over here, this unknown plus 0, 0, and uh, so 5 over 3, 5 thirds, same unknown. Theta t is a common factor, so 1 plus 5 thirds. 360 equals our unknown times well, 1 of is a 3 over 3, 3 plus 5, 8, 8 thirds. Hence, the angle is 360 times 3 over 8. And I'm going to leave it like that because I do 360 times 3 divided by 8. 135 degrees done and now you can see a short video an example of uh, what could happen if we try to do it so this is a turntable and uh, I have a motorized car and uh, if I let it go it starts moving well I will have to 
use my hand to turn it because I cannot turn the wheels. You can pretend you didn't see my hand. And eventually, what's going to happen? This is what's going to happen. Thank you.